yeah uh, sorry for the disturbance actually uh, lots and lots of mosquitoes in my room so i am just like uh, yeah very disturbing actually plus when i am concentrating uh, they are taking undue advantage because i am not moving my hands and legs so they are like sucking the blood like anything so good for them anyways i have sprayed the whatever some liquid comes uh, so coming back to this uh, uh, this is the input side so this is the input voltage so when this is forward uh, this uh, diode allows the current to flow so how much current will flow uh, the potential difference across this which is v divided by r that is out is the current and uh, this uh, current into the resistance r will be the potential difference across it so we know that uh, so whatever is the potential difference applied across this the same is reflected across this resistance so like this this but what about uh, when in the negative half cycle when the voltage becomes negative so this is the negative half cycle and in this the voltage becomes negative so this becomes now uh, negatively charged and this becomes like a uh, positively charged so this is like behaving like a battery which wants to flow the current like this we know that this is like a reverse path for the diode and then uh, ideal diode doesn't allow any current to flow even actually an ideal uh, forget about the ideal diode even uh, like uh, uh, even this uh, non-ideal one will allow only the current to flow in micro ampere range which is not very significant yeah so anyway so this current is negligible isn't it in the backward so if the current is negligible what is the potential difference across this resistance that we get uh, the potential difference will be zero isn't it no current so potential difference of what we get across the resistance is simply zero in the negative half cycle and then again uh, in the positive half cycle like this so current flows and we get the same voltage here so we get this and this so what we have done is something called a rectification what is rectification rectification means converting a ac into dc that means uh, instead of having a positive half cycle negative half positive half negative half we are having only the uh, one direction unidirectional flow of current and the same uh, unidirectional potential difference we can say now instead of having this ac source like this what is given in your textbook is uh, this is the situation given so, in, uh, so this is a transformer, step down transformer. This is the original power station. From the power station, the you know the uh, voltage is stepped up to avoid the transmission loss. And after that, uh, after lots and lots of stepping up, uh, finally when we come to this uh, consumer end, uh, what we do is uh, we step it down. And so this is the uh, voltage. So voltage across the secondary coils is actually the input voltage for this uh, circuit and this is the circuit having the load resistance load resistance is the resistance which is our actual uh, beneficiary isn't it we want to utilize this resistance and utilize the power dissipated in it okay so again in the positive half cycle we can say this uh, diode will allow the current to flow like this and so we'll get a potential difference across it quite properly whereas in the negative half cycle uh, in the negative half cycle this will become positive side and this will become negative side so this would like to draw a current like from positive to negative which won't be allowed by the diode so we get this kind of a rectification time so this is called a half wave rectifier why because uh, it is uh, uh, rectifying only the half one it is not inverting this so there is a loss here so what we have is a full wave rectifier so what's there in the full wave rectifier so you can see from the diagram that this is called a center type rectifier now why it is like that because the uh, resistance connection the load this is the load resistance so load resistance versus this so let's say in the positive half cycle where the this is the input voltage input voltage in the positive half cycle this is positive this is negative maybe let's say this is a plus 100 volt and this is let's say 0 volt and maybe this is around 50 volt so uh, can can the current flow like this from here to here from this high potential to low potential no why because this diode d2 it, it won't allow this current this current won't be allowed here so what is the path for the current to flow the current can flow from this high potential of 100 to a low potential of this 50 so like this current will flow so current is flowing like this from right to left in this positive half when this is positive this is a higher this is low and this is somewhere in middle so this potential drop is the one which we are utilizing here now what about the negative half cycle in the negative half cycle what will happen is that instead of this zero this will become this uh, 100 volt and this will become instead zero so this is having a high potential and this is having the low potential and this 
this will like to draw a current like this again uh, this current will be opposed by the battery uh, sorry opposed by this uh, diode d1 and this current can't flow so the only way the, for the current to flow is from here to here like this isn't it from high potential to low potential again the current is flowing from left uh, sorry right to left in the resistance so in both the positive half cycle where this is high potential this is low potential current flows like this and in the negative half cycle the current flows again like this so in both the cases the direction of current through the resistance is same so potential difference uh, doesn't change its polarity so the output is like this now why the output has only got this v max by 2 because we know that instead of utilizing the entire uh, 100 volt here which is the v max we are able to utilize only the uh, 50 volt at a time so 50 volt at the positive half cycle and 50 volt at the negative half cycle so this is a compromise that we are doing uh, for getting the uh, more uniformly like uh, instead of getting 100 100 100 then 0 then 100 and 0 it's better to get a 50 50 kind of thing isn't it in all around. so this is the um, output so this is a uh, output voltage here o u t p u t yeah so output and uh, this output voltage is first because of the current through d1 in the positive half and then in the negative half cycle this then the current is uh, flowing due to uh, d2 and again due to d1 and d2 and this thing uh, continues so in this way we have uh, achieved rectification which is converting a uh, ac into dc but this is not a very good way of getting is it is what if we want a uniform current to flow like this so when we want to get a uniform current we should uh, remove this ripples and instead of having this uh, ripples we should have a constant value of current through it so for that what we do is we use uh, something called a filter so what filter does it uh, filter actually uh, removes all this uh, ripples effects and provides a smooth uh, continuous a single value of current uh, so before going into the uh, filtering part there is another kind of rectifier which is called a bridge rectifier now this bridge rectifier doesn't compromise on this uh, 100 volt here for example in the positive half cycle so positive half cycle this is positive this is negative so the current will flow like this oh, sorry the current will flow like this here uh, it is quite self explanatory from the diagram and obviously when the current would like to go from this side uh, it can't go like this isn't it actually the current wants to go like this divide into two parts come back and then go like this but uh, this uh, this current is not allowed because this will become reverse biased uh, so the current uh, obviously this current coming here again it can't go like this why because again this is reverse biased rb means reverse biased so this current only has option to go through this resistance and then again like this what about the negative half cycle you might have figured out about the negative half cycle also so in this uh, negative half cycle you can see uh, this is positive this is negative so the current would like to go like this but again uh, instead of going in, uh, in this two ways uh, this uh, path is not allowed because of the reverse biasing so this and again the current again when it comes here it can't go like this so it has uh, only the option to go like this so you can see that in both the cases the current is flowing through the resistance in the same path and we are not uh, compromising on the uh, total voltage here because in the center type uh, the 100 of voltage uh, across the uh, power was uh, dropped to 50 isn't it but here we are getting the full 100 so this is what is called as a, a bridge rectifier why it is called bridge because you can say that this the situation is somewhat like a, a Wistone bridge in which the resistance is kept in between now uh, just one more thing before we go ahead and this is regarding this uh, center type resistance uh, center type rectifier so instead of making this a uh, simplified diagram what is done in your textbook is unnecessary complications and I'll just show you what are those uh, unnecessary complications so let me get a rough sheet here so uh, uh, this side is added as it is isn't it and then there is a, a step down transformer here now of course they have put two diodes here like this just like the one uh, I have drawn here but instead of connecting a low distance here so this low resistance what they have done is they have first put it like this so anyway this should be connected to low resistance and then they have connected it to the low resistance and so this is the resistance the other part of the resistance should be connected like this isn't it so instead of connecting directly between these two points here a resistance again between these two points they have connected a resistance but not by this direct path but via this uh, unnecessary path and then so this is the diagram which is uh, given in our textbook and also 
uh, if you want to get marks in NCRT uh, book so uh, I mean uh, the CBSC exam so you should be drawing this one and not the one I have drawn here so this is just for your understanding purpose the real diagram is this only isn't it okay. so, so yeah so coming back to the filtering point uh, so before we begin some very small uh, recap of the concept that you might have learned so for example if we connect this uh, 20 volt battery to this uh, 20 microfarad uh, capacitor which already has a charge of 100 and minus 100 isn't it so what is the potential difference across the capacitor initially before we close the switch that is q by c which is 5 volt so potential difference across the capacitor is 5 whereas the battery has a 20 so we can say that this is a undercharged condition and in case of undercharged condition after closing the switch here the current will flow like this isn't it so clock was correct Whereas uh, if initially this again the same 20 microfarad capacitor had instead got a 5000 of micro coulomb uh, charge in it then the potential difference across it would have been 250 whereas the battery EMF is only 20 and so this is highly overcharged as compared to the battery EMF its voltage is quite high and so when the switch is closed here uh, the switch is closed the current will flow in opposite direction this is just to show you that if the voltage across the capacitor is greater than the voltage across the battery reverse current flows whereas if the voltage across the capacitor is less than the voltage across the battery then forward current flows and the capacitor gets charged okay now coming to this um, filtering circuit how does it look like well it has got a resistance and uh, capacitors in a parallel with each other along with the diode here and the input voltage now we have already rectified this uh, input voltage remember that and so the input voltage is something like this only thing is that we need to sort out this ripples isn't it now one thing for sure is that uh, this uh, VC and uh, VR will be same because they are uh, in parallel with each other isn't it so potential difference across the resistor and the capacitor are same so how does this filter works uh, just one more thing let's say when the capacitor is getting discharged through a resistor you might have uh, studied in your uh, current electricity the discharging of a capacitor isn't it so when the capacitor discharges across a resistance by driving a current through it and then the uh, voltage and the uh, charge in it it decreases exponentially yeah so let's uh, try to understand the uh, filtering circuit so let me just uh, tell you this is the filtering circuit here now for the first time uh, through this uh, capacitor and uh, resistor arrangement an input voltage is applied and this is the input voltage here like this as this voltage uh, keeps increasing uh, across, uh, so this voltage will get reflected across the capacitor as well as the a resistor same voltage will come so what this will do is it will immediately charge the capacitor and it will flow uh, current through the resistor and this both the voltages across the c and r will be equal to this and so the voltage across c and the voltage across r will keep increasing until the voltage across both of them reaches maximum let's call it v max but what next next the input voltage decreases when the input voltage decreases whereas the voltage across the capacitor has already reached max and then the input voltage decrease it means that now the capacitor is connected to a battery of uh, lower emf and so this uh, capacitor has got more potential difference across it and the input voltage which is the battery emf kind of thing has decreased and so the capacitor would like to get discharged but then for the capacitor to get discharged through the battery uh, diode will not allow to do that isn't it because for that the current should flow like this so this won't allow so the only uh, path for the capacitor to get discharge is through this resistance and so what will happen is uh, once the voltage across the capacitor has increased why because of the increase in input voltage till the time the input voltage is increasing uh, capacitor has no problem and the voltage across it also increases but when the voltage across the input uh, decreases and the capacitor already has got a higher voltage so no current flows in backward direction and the capacitor gets discharged through the resistor so this is now a discharging circuit and this is an exponential decay but then this exponential decay does not happen continuously because again the input voltage rises and so when the input voltage will rise again then the capacitor will again start to get charged so here is the circuit so this is the initial part 
by the time uh, uh, capacitor also reaches the maximum voltage and uh, input voltage also also reaches the maximum so both are same uh, input voltage is maximum capacitor voltage is maximum after that input voltage decreases but then the capacitor voltage decreases exponentially here so this is when the capacitor is getting discharged but by the time the capacitor has discharged somewhat the input voltage has also risen and now it's time for input voltage to become greater than the capacitor voltage because the capacitor if it would have continued to discharge its voltage would have decreased like this but input voltage will again charge it to high and by till the time input voltage is increasing the capacitor voltage will also increase and so they will all go to the maximum here and after reaching here again what will happen is input voltage will decrease and so the capacitor will again discharge through the resistance but by the time it has discharged somewhat uh, the input voltage has grown up again and again it will charge the capacitor so instead of going like this like this and like this it will go like this all right so sorry. so yeah so the voltage across the capacitor will vary something like this discharging charging by the input voltage discharging through the resistor charging by the input voltage discharging through the resistor charging by the input voltage discharging through the resistor and so the voltage across the capacitor will go like this and whatever is the voltage across the capacitor is also the voltage across the load resistance because both of them are in parallel with each other so what we have got is somewhat a constant isn't it so it's like a not not as bad as this isn't it this is like just too bad it's going to zero isn't it but this is like a some small ripples now what we should do is we should use a very high capacity capacitor why is that because uh, this uh, time constant of uh, discharging you may remember is equal to rc and this is the time taken to lose 60 percent of its charge what we want is that when the capacitor is discharging through this resistor here we don't want it to get discharged so quickly and we want it to discharge very very slowly so when it uh, discharges very very slowly then by the time the input voltage has already risen this capacitor should be discharge very very less and again rises to input voltage and again discharges to a very very less so the lesser it discharges the more flatter will be this uh, curve and less fluctuations will be there so we want the capacitor to get less discharge so its discharging time constant should be very very high which means it should be a very powerful capacitor that no matter how much current flow through the resistor uh, the voltage across it decreases uh, at a very uh, small rate so this was all about the filtering okay so uh, this part one part of the circuit is over and from the next point uh, time onwards we will be discussing about that okay so that's it uh, about the xena diodes and the solar and uh, uh, cells and uh, photodiodes light emitting diodes and uh, all those things auto electrical devices and uh, after that we will be discussing about the transistors all right See you next class. Thank you.